All right, so when we're riding, you know, I have kind of a checklist before I depart and do whatever I'm going to do, whether it's a colt or a, a broke horse. Uh, but part of that checklist is just make sure that I have connection, um, you know, through my reins on the on the front end of the horse, the front half, you should say, I guess, and then making sure I have connection with my body and communication uh, on the, the middle and last half of the horse. So, you know, from our, our hands in a hackamore application, I'm looking for the fact, she just did it right there, that when I lift my rein, she drops her head. And the hackamore headset's different than a snaffle bit headset. Snaffle bit headset tends to be pretty dropped and curved. Whereas with the, the hackamore, we're looking for more of a natural bend in the neck and a drop at the pole. So again, I'll demonstrate on her. She has a nice little headset right there. That's a hackamore headset, all right? A little lower would be a rainer. A little higher would be a rain cow horse or, you know, outside headset. Second thing that we have to do, of course, again, for communication purposes, like I had said before, was that if I lift my rein, she has to give me her eye to that side. Here it is on this side. She's being a little stiff on this side today. There we go. So she just has to give us our head. She, again, I'm not looking for her to make these big dynamic bends in her body right off the bat if she was you know, just being started. As we progress, I'm gonna certainly look for that, but right now it's not important. Now hands are a big deal too, and you're gonna hear in the Hackmore world about hands quite a bit. I don't wanna see people pulling on both reins consistently. If I do, or it looks like I do, I'm really putting like 90 in, in 10. So here's 90%, here's 10% of my hand as I bump her back. And you'll notice that as I'm moving her, I'm kind of rocking my hands back and forth. The reason why you don't want to pull 90 and 90 in both hands um, is that eventually she's going to get rotten to it. She'll, she'll get pushy with it because it won't mean much to her. Remember, it's a signal tool. So I might bounce her off like that, but I'm not going to hammer her with both hands. Also, they try to dive off on you in the beginning you can elevate them by elevating your hands. Just lift your hands up. See how that elevated her, her neck? Again, we don't want her dropping all the way down to the ground. I want her, her neck to have kind of a natural bend and a drop at the pole. So as they dive out, again, you just lift your hands. Your hands will kind of elevate the horse's head through your riding uh, procedures. You'll notice I have this little loop here. Some people call it California loop. You can call it whatever you want. You do need that. And this is kind of short. Today it was on a different horse. I just used it on her to demo. But I like about six inches. I like about that much in my hand normally. Again, this is a little short for me. But you need that because if I need to release quickly, I can release that rein or pick up more, more slack. See how that, that works? I can elongate my reins or release and then bring them back. Some guys, Benny Gutron rides with a teardrop like this in his left hand. That's fine too. I mean, it releases quickly. Remember, we're signaling, so release is important. There's all kinds of different ways of doing it. This tends to be the most, the most normal way, if you will, um, as far as riding with Makati. But you'll also notice as I'm working my hands, I'm keeping them kind of busy, and that I tend to ride with my pointy finger and my thumb. I'm not, I'm not gripping all the time. You don't want to grip. If you can learn how to ride like this, open-handed and, and just using your thumb and pointy finger, well, you're going to have something nice going on there. And that shows communication, especially from a judged standpoint.